actually does it. Okay, this is not just an old man dreaming. This is, this is real stuff. This is happening. Okay, the writing is on the wall. If you're still asleep, if you still can't see, huh? wake up. The whole civilization is going to collapse. By the end of this year, everybody is going to agree. The public at large, the mainstream media, everybody is going to agree that this is what's happening. By the end of this year, early next year, you'll see. This is the beginning of the end of Western society. So any, anything that you value, you have to be responsible for maintaining it because no big government, no big corporation, no big, uh, you know, sangha or religion or anything or outside group is going to do it for you. You have to take the responsibility yourself. Yeah. That's the meaning. So I know this is not a popular view. Uh, nobody likes to hear bad news. And nobody likes the bringer of bad news. Uh, but we have a responsibility to tell the truth. And we know this is coming. We've known it's been coming for many years. You can go back to our writings back to 1983 when we talk about this stuff. Uh, in 2003, I published an article called The Ontological Bomb. We're going to, right now, it, it's only on the old site, but uh, soon it's going to be available on the new website as well. And uh, in this article, I predict so many things. Uh, I don't uh, state them in as uh, clear a language as I am right now. Because in those days, it was even more unbelievable than it is now. Huh? But I foretold that, that things were going to start changing so fast, people were, were going to start going crazy. Huh? There's this whole wave of people shooting their families and then shooting themselves and stuff like this. Huh? Try to understand, this is only the beginning. People are going to lose it. They are going to go nuts. Uh, you have to form a community around you. You can't get through this alone, and you can't get through it with just your family. You're going to have to form a community that has some stable spiritual values and some powerful spiritual processes, practices, that will get you through this with your sanity intact. Otherwise, you are going to be uh, helpless, overwhelmed with the changes that are coming down. Please take this very seriously. Please do something about it, especially if you're a member of our community, our online community. Uh, don't just sit back and wait for us to organize everything. You take the initiative and you do something to help yourself. Otherwise, don't blame us when all this stuff that we're talking about happens later on this year and early next year. Huh? It's going to get really, really scary, really bad. And it's going to happen so fast that nobody's going to be able to prepare for it unless you start now. You have to start now. Stockpiling food, tools, organizing, especially organizing, educating people and organizing them into communities, local communities that can raise your own food. Huh? You have to start doing this now. This year there's going to be a major crop failure. Food prices are going to go through the roof in the fall. And then it's going to get bad. So listen up. Pay attention. We're saying all these things for your benefit. So I know it's hard to hear. I know it's hard to understand. Uh, but we're plugged in, we're connected to the source, we know what's happening, we know why it's happening, we know the whole mechanism and everything that's going on. And little by little, in these darshans and classes, I'm going to reveal everything. Is that a shadow?
No. No? Okay. So, now let's uh, continue with the nectar of devotion. After this, we'll have questions and discussion. So, think up your questions. We're continuing chapter 17, Ecstatic Love. Sometimes, however, it is found that without undergoing any devotional process, all of a sudden one develops devotion for Lord Krishna. This sudden development of the devotional attitude in a person must be understood as a special mercy of Krishna or of his devotee. This apparently accidental development of ecstatic feelings through the causeless mercy of Krishna can be divided into three groups simply by speaking, simply by glancing, and simply by good wishes. In the Naradiya Purana, there is a statement about developing of ecstatic love simply by speaking. Lord Krishna said to Narada, O best of the Brahmanas, I wish that you may develop unalloyed devotional service to me, which is full of transcendental bliss and all auspiciousness. In other words, Krishna gave his mercy to Narada simply by speaking, simply by blessing him like that. There's another example of this in the life of Rupa Goswami, who wrote this book, Nectar of Devotion. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Rupa Goswami for 11 days continuously at Prayag, uh, now known as Allahabad, in India. And uh, after 11 days, Rupa Goswami was in a high state of, of spiritual bliss. But he was also overwhelmed with the amount of information, the teaching that Lord Chaitanya had given. Christian, could, could please pay attention. Yeah, no, no, sit. And just pay attention. Just hear. Just hear very nicely. So, uh, where was I? He begged Lord Chaitanya, please make all of this that you have taught me manifest in my heart and in my mind so that I can write books about it. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted him to write down all these teachings. And he was feeling like, oh, how can I write all this stuff down? This is too much. So, he begged the Lord, you please bless me that I can realize all this. And so Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, he said, may all of these instructions awaken within your heart. And by this blessing, that's exactly what happened. Rupa Goswami realized all of these high instructions of devotional service. And he became fully self-realized and also able to describe all these things in a systematic way. And he spent the rest of his life writing down all these instructions and the realizations that he had gotten from Lord Chaitanya. So just by speaking, Krishna can give someone a full uh, realization of devotional service. In the Skanda Purana, there is a statement about developing ecstatic love towards Krishna simply by glancing. It is stated there, when the inhabitants of Jangala province saw the personality of Godhead Krishna, they were so stricken with feeling that they could not withdraw their glance from him. Uh, just by seeing Krishna, they developed ecstatic love. And also is described that Krishna, he casts his glance, his merciful glance over his devotees. And simply by his glance, then the devotees become enlightened. Huh? Simply by glancing. We can understand the, there's a shloka that each of the senses of the transcendental body of the Lord can perform the activities of all the other senses. 
you see? So Krishna can speak by glancing. If he can benedict people with devotional service simply by speaking, he can perform the same function simply by glancing. For example, it's stated that when uh, Narayana emanates the potency of the material creation, he glances over the material nature and impregnates her with all the spirit souls, uh, the Tatashta Shakti, the, the spiritual living entities, you and me, <laughs> the Jiva souls. So uh, he doesn't have to contact Maya. He doesn't have to, to touch the material nature. He can impregnate her simply by glancing from far away. <laughs>